As a training, I'm an, I'm an architect, uh, but I haven't been doing that for quite a, quite a while. But it's still sort of a basic discipline I used to think about things. And uh, so I'm going to be talking about cities and urban development and what that link, how that links to innovation. What stops, what supports innovation? What's the connection between communities and cities? And why cities? Because cities are where we will either fail or succeed with this planet in the coming decades. Cities are where people are coming to, cities are where the problems are created and where they should be solved. And I want to have an optimistic approach that we can solve the uh, quite cha big challenges we face ahead. Because people are quite good at doing things together when they are given the possibility. But let's ask first the quite fundamental question, what is the city? Uh, is it infrastructure? And this is the uh, old picture from Helsinki, great looking buildings. Uh, or is it logistics, movement of stuff, harbors, rivers, Hansa trade, etc. Uh, I, I think these both are points of the city, but actually city is about people far more than any of these. If you have a city without people, it's an empty city. It's a tourist attraction where you can go to have a look at the empty place. And uh, because of this, I, and I'm a music man, so I brought with me, me a, a cassette. Uh, I don't know if you, some of here still still recognize, recognize cassettes. Uh, this is a modern type of cassette in which you don't have to put in a player to, to play. And I thought to play you a song from an architect, Tuomas Toivonen, who is also an urbanist. And it tells you in a karaoke version quite condensed way how what I also feel about cities. So here goes. This is a this is a rap song, so I'm going to be doing the lyrics for you. Among the great human inventions, language, fire, wheel and move. The city is an organism. It's never complete. It's always in flux. It's always transforming and changing. Which means that planning for a city, doing systems for the city, is cultivation. It's not machinery. And that applies to all aspects of city life. And I think this is one of the big mistakes which urban planners tend to do, is to think of a city as something which can be complete. Think of Brazil. I don't know if you have been there. Great accomplishment by great architect, but totally inhuman surrounding. Yes. So, uh, what can be done to the cities? Cities can be killed. Uh, I quote here urbanist Jane Jacobs, who's talked about highways of killers of cities and what happens when you build a highway is that people don't want to walk near the highway because people don't walk there shops don't succeed there and this radiation extends block by block around the highway creating an empty place in the city creating boundaries on which other side can be good and the other side can be bad neighborhood quite randomly picked divided by the highway Healthy combination of old buildings, new buildings, reused buildings make a lively city. City which is uh, nice to walk in. And Chegos has said that uh, old ideas can live in new buildings, but new ideas need old buildings. Because new buildings tend to be too expensive for up and coming things. It's also good that cities can be resurrected. And especially these sort of uh, no man's lands in the cities could be seen as a be seen as a resource, and not as as a problem. Warehouses, storage areas, old factories, 
they are the places for innovation nowadays. As an example here, it's a restaurant day from, uh, which originated in Helsinki. Basically, it's an idea that anybody can hold a restaurant for one day. The last one was now on 5th of uh, May, and we had uh, 230 restaurants in Helsinki and about 300 elsewhere in the world. I had one. I played records and sold rubber pie for people who came to, market, came to our house. And how this works is that communities create solutions for themselves. It's always been this way. It's not a new thing, it's not a living lab thing in any way. Uh, pop music, all forms of culture, sports, they are community creations, which have been capitalized maybe by companies, content creators, you name it. But they are collective efforts. That's the way humankind does things. And now we have tools to tap into that potential in new ways. Restaurant day couldn't have existed without the mobile cloud which tells people where to go. Cities are searchable. You don't have to browse the city anymore, which was the old metaphor. You walked on the street, you browsed the city. Now you can search for it and go straight to where you want to go. Uh, which brings new tools for participation, but the problem with participation is it's a tricky business. Most attempts to create participatory platforms for governments, for example, have failed. Barack Obama got, after his election, he opened an open government site to pinpoint the most important problem the US president must solve, and the winner was legalization of marijuana. Wasn't probably not quite the idea which Obama had in mind. What's in it for me? We are all here for selfish reasons. And there must be somebody who promises that, yes, we will do something if you participate. And this is most often the one part which governments forget. Yeah, tell us all your ideas, but actually we don't promise that we will do anything. We'll just collect them. And 100,000 homes example there is a system of finding out the most people most in need of an apartment and promising that, yes, if you help us to find these people, we'll provide them with a house. And they are going to house 100,000 people in the U.S. in the coming months. So our last point is that innovation is everywhere. So if you think of uh, uh, the uh, slum near Nairobi, where this picture is from, you should, could think of it as a problem. But uh, it's hard to think of as a problem something which currently, uh, globally, by Robert Neuwirth studies, uh, moves 50 percent of the people in the world work for the gray market work for street stalls work for the unofficial economy half of the world economy is so-called problem in the problem area in 15 years time it will be two-thirds you shouldn't call that a problem it's it's, uh, it's it's like you would call women a problem or men a problem half of the population of the, of the globe you would call that a problem you have to tap into that, that potential and make it possible to create healthy connections between so-called official sector, governmental sector, and the, the gray markets. Because that's where the growth, are, growth is and that's where the innovation is. I think that the dual SIM phones, which Nokia is uh, producing and selling, were originally hardware hacks from Indian and Chinese street markets. Because they wanted to have phones which can roam in different networks. They didn't exist, so they created them themselves. Okay, uh, so the key point really it's all about people. If we don't connect to people, if we don't connect to people's motivations and needs, there is no growth. That is, that is where the answer is. And people are capable of solving the problems they have created. Thank you.